Hello everyone, welcome back to my third, well I guess my fourth Urza's AI video, my third entry in the series of reimagining dungeon crawl things as magic thing. We did uh, normal old monsters in the first video and unranned artifacts in the second, and uh, I thought we would, this is the last one I have planned, you know, may maybe there could be one more, but this, this, actually, well okay, we could do one more on like various hell lords or something, but uh, this time I picked some of the... Not necessarily the most iconic, although some of them are uh, unique monsters. Uh, so we're, we're, we're doing unique monsters here. I think several of these are, are iconic and, and famous and, and well-loved. But some of them I just thought, like, yeah, they're, they're okay uh, as dungeon crawl monsters, but I thought their names would maybe make them good magic cards. So, Oh, whoops, that's the last one. Don't peek. That one's last. Um, first up is something you would run into early. Sigmund the Dreaded. He kills a lot of players because you run into him so early and he, he can turn invisible and does a bunch of damage. So I love that he's a wizard. Five mana, two, three. So very expensive for the stats. Other zombies you control get plus one, plus one. Okay, not really worth the cost yet. But then it has this two mana tap, draw a card. I think that makes it pretty decent and limited. Um, as like a... You know, a control win condition, kind of. You this, this is a way to produce lots of card advantage on a static board so that you can kind of play more stuff than your opponent. It's nothing incredible, I think. But I give, it a, give it like a decent 6 or 7, maybe? It's pretty expensive. Maybe, maybe just a 6, maybe even a 5, somewhere in that neighborhood. Only the living deserve a death curse. Oh, it's good we didn't ask for any guardian mummies. Those have death curses. Uh... Decent card, Sigmund, Sigmund the Dreaded. He looks pretty pretty cursed. Uh, not at all what I imagined Sigmund would look like, but sure, he is a, ma a magic user with a scythe, I guess. Uh, you know, cool. Decent card. What's next? I did not ask for Void. I asked for Crazy Eve, please. So Crazy Eve is this guy who just... You, you find him in his little house sometimes... And he just loves maces for no reason at all, and he just speaks complete gibberish all the time. This is better. He's a 2-mana 1-1 one, one flying spirit with a flicker ability? I mean, that's actually kind of cool, right? 2-mana and then sacrifice him to put him back on the battlefield means he dodges removal? Kind of? He's a 1-1 one, one that's hard to kill? Um, I mean, for two mana, I don't know if this is that bad. It's not, like, good? Because it doesn't... It's not like it, it has hexproof or something. They can target it, you have to spend mana, and any enchantments or buffs you had on the thing fall off as well. But it's still a two mana 1-1 one, one that's kind of tough to get rid of. And it's a flyer, so it gets in chip damage. I think it's alright in limited. Give it a 5. Um, the art makes no sense to me at all. I see buildings and like a trail of flame and some kind of creature here. Not clear what's going on. If they try to look away but not across comes back with his disciples. Okay, Crazy you if you could imagine him having disciples, that's something, I guess. Um, obviously, all of these in principle should be legendary, um, but I don't know how good the game is, Urza's AI is at detecting that. Next up, Josephine, Decaying Necromancer, 2 mana black, 1-1. One, one. Human Cleric, sure, you, you might go with Wizard, but Cleric's fine, I guess. Tap and Sacrificer, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. That could be okay. It's a pretty slow reanimate. But uh, it only costs two. Maybe, I, I don't know how reanimate decks work in Constructed. Would this see play in them? I imagine probably not. Um, take your dead. Yeah, that's, that's good flavor text, actually. The art looks pretty good. She looks like she could be falling apart, and it's definitely recognizable as a face. 
Maybe even got her hair up in a bun there? No, hair's coming down here. I don't know what this thing is. A big old tumor? <laughs> uh, some kind of decoration? Unclear. Uh, yeah, I mean, this this card is probably fine in, in limited. Not incredible or anything, because it's value and not tempo, but yeah, it's fine. Next up, we have an empty card. Jorgren the Earthshaker is who we were trying to generate. He's a dwarf and who casts earth magic. In particular, Shatter. Although, I don't know, did they change it? I haven't played in a long time. I remember there was some change to how his Shatter worked, I think. He's a 3-mana 1-1. One, one. His type is just Jorgren, which, which makes sense, right? This looks like, you know, this should be a Planeswalker. And Planeswalkers have a type that comes, like, from their name before the the. But it made it a creature. A 1-1 one, one Flyer. Jorgren the Earthshaker deals one damage to target creature. It's okay. Give it, give it a three, a four. I'll be the current, the king of Skirkin for all time. Now let's just let's just try and fix this a little bit. I think that Jorgren the Earthshaker should cost four. Uh, let's say three and a red and a. What, what color would Earth Shaking be? Like, what color is Earth Magic in Magic? Is it black, maybe? Let's just make him all red. And he's a Planeswalker Jordan. So it, it really hates generating Planeswalkers. This one has a the in the name. Uh, and it clearly wanted to make a Planeswalker, so I'm going to help it out here. Three red, red Planeswalker. What do we get out of that? Oh, it puts loyalty counters on now. Nice. It didn't used to do that. Whenever you cast... Wait, what? That doesn't make any sense. All of these effects are nonsense. Plus one, when you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on Jorgren the Earthshaker. Okay. I mean, this... It doesn't have, like, even a limited time de So it's, like, forever for the rest of the game. This could be an emblem. Right? But the effect is to put a counter on this, which doesn't do anything because it's a, not a creature. But if you had something that turned Planeswalkers into creatures, you would have a big one. Um, the minus three is you get an emblem with tap, Jorgren deals one damage to any target. So, like, I don't think you can tap emblems. They're not permanents, and you only tap permanence and untap permanence during your untap phase untap step so i don't think this effect works at all and the minus seven is just that but like bigger so this planeswalker does nothing the art looks pretty cool that's maybe even recognizable as a dwarf carrying some kind of staff here you could sort of imagine that maybe i like the art Card makes no sense. All right, moving on. Mara, Lord of Illusions. A three-mana double blue 2-2 two -two flyer. It loves 2-2 two -two cards. When it enters the battlefield, draw then discard. Totally fine. Nothing insane, but... You know, a three-mana 2-2 two -two is flyer is okay. And you get this other ability. Give it a five in limited, maybe a six. Oh, and it's a... It's a rare. Okay, I don't know if I would have made that a rare, but all right. Uh, in the wind, nothing matters. In the hive, nothing matters. In the sun, <laughs> nothing matters. In the forest, nothing matters. I do love when the AI gets trapped in a corner where it's just like, oh, what I should do is keep repeating the same thing with variations. Anyway, decent card. I like the art. It's just like a kind of a wizard dude, blue wizard. Yeah, makes makes sense. You know, the effect is not very wizardy, but okay, sure, it's fine. Uh, next up, Ilsu, Witch of the Tides. She's like a merfolk wizard kind of person. Four mana, double blue, two, three. Each... <laughs> Excuse me, this effect is nonsense. <laughs> Each other creature you control can't draw more than one card. Okay, creatures don't draw cards, so that does nothing. But just in case, you can repay the cost... 
and tap Ilsu and make that effect still true. <laughs> it's, it's only creatures you control, so enemy creatures can draw cards if they want. <laughs> okay. So, like, if you had a creature that said, like, when this attacks, draw five cards, it would still draw five cards, because it's not the creature drawing, it's you. So the, the, the rule text on this make no sense. You may take as many heads as you wish to hunt. Sure. So mechanics-wise, this, this card's a real stinker. A four mana double pipped 2-3. I mean, that's, that's like a two. Uh, it's not a one, because you might be desperate enough to put this in your deck if you got really bad draw like drafts, but I would never be happy to run this. The art looks good, though. Something's happening to the tides. There's magic coming out of this person's hands that's affecting it. Great. Good work. Uh, this is the 27-headed Lernaean Hydra. <laughs> okay, this is a, a bit of a stinker as well. Um, the art is amazing. I love it. There's just heads everywhere, and it's huge. Um, but it's a 2 mana Hydra. And just like every other Hydra, it's a 0-0. Zero, zero, or not every, but a lot of Hydras in Magic are 0 zero, that enter with some number of counters somehow. Or they have, you know, a toughness and power of X or, or whatever. This one is a 0-0 zero, zero that doesn't have any counters on it. <laughs> it has Death Touch as long as it has no one, minus one, minus one counters on it. So it's a 0-0 zero, zero Death Touch. Good value for two mana. Um... And if it did have minus one, minus one counters, you could get rid of them. So you pay two and a black, remove a minus one, minus one counter to make Lernaean Hydra itself lose one life, which also makes no sense. Like, this card doesn't do nothing. You could put it in a deck that, like, as creatures enter the battlefield with plus one, plus one counters, or... Other creatures you control have plus one, plus one, or something like that. It, 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 like, it's not impossible to play this card, but I can't imagine ever choosing to play it. It's a two-mana zero-zero. If you have all those effects, wouldn't you rather play a two-mana two-two? <laughs> the flesh of the Hydra it protects is devoid of saliva. Oh no, someone drank up all the saliva from the Hydra. Oh, good art, though. It's like devouring an entire city all at once. I like that. I'm going to give this card a zero. It's awful. Um, next up, Menace, Voice of Zin. Oh, it's got two colors. We don't get that very often. Uh, is that like the Blizzard logo? What? <laughs> that's, that's, this text looks like it's in that font. Anyway, so Zin is uh, the god of order, cleanliness, and, and stuff like that. Purity in Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. And Menas is an angel of his, uh, a particularly you know, powerful angel. Instead, we have a four mana Rakdos 3 3. It's a zombie minion. When another creature dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on Menas Voice of Zin. Is that good? I really don't know. I feel like probably not. But. Red-black is the deck you would want it in, I guess. And, you know, 4-mana 3-3, three, three, the stats are not great, but they're playable for limited. Um, I think in limited, this is probably pretty all right. If they can't remove it early, it's going to be a problem. But there's, there's like, non-damage base removal, right? You know, I, I don't know. This card is fine in limited. Give it a, give it a 6. Five, because it's double color, and you would have to be in those colors to play it. Um, its laughter is such that its hooves rattle like whispers. Okay, not sure how you could do that with your laugh, but very good. And last one here. I did nine this time. I just couldn't limit myself to eight. There's so many classic dungeon crawl. This is Boris, Master of Life and Death, who's a... A lich, uh, uh, a wizard who every time you kill him, he just like so he's gone, but like he might reappear again later in the game in some different place. Uh, Boris, master of life and death. I don't know how much he costs, but he costs at least one black and red. We'll assume it's just one black red. 
At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life, and it's a 2-3? This seems quite good and limited for the mana cost. Like, the stats are fine for the mana. Nothing incredible. Um, but just swinging life every turn? This is just a creature that they're going to have to deal with. Um, yeah, I would, I would draft this in probably a lot of black-red decks. Give it, give it a... Six? A five? Ah, B Boris has some words of wisdom for us as well. You don't lose the game if you don't lose the game. Truer words have never been spoken, buddy. All right, that's, uh, that's me done with uh, the kind of classic Dungeon Crawl uniques. Uh, none of them, I think, turned out to be legendary, and we had to force one of them into a Planeswalker. Um, actually, I don't know. Let's... I feel like the opportunities were wasted on some of these, right? So let's let's make Boris a Planeswalker as well. And costs. Let's make him pretty expensive. Four black black. Actually, life and death? He maybe should be black white, right? But more black than white? So a very expensive planeswalker. A seven mana planeswalker rivaling Nicol Bolas, maybe. And his subtype is Boris. So what, what do we get if we ask for Boris to be a Planeswalker instead? I do like, I don't know, the Planeswalkers it generates are pretty silly. It doesn't have a lot of Planeswalkers in its input data, I think. Uh, he's just... <laughs> what the heck is this? He's just a couple swords being held up by a skull and the letter E? <laughs> uh, so we can't see the full cost. That's fine. We know what it is because we asked for it. Uptick to make a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Minus... Oh, it doesn't have any number of loyalty counters for some reason? Um, minus 2, destroy target creature. Minus 7, target creature gets plus 2, plus 2, and trample until end of turn. Seems weak. I would not pay 7 for this. Um, I like the text, though. <laughs> Zombies are my family, the cadavers of my lost friends, the corpses of my brothers. Doesn't really seem like something Nib Mizzet would say, uh, but pretty good. Yeah. All right. So an absolutely awful planeswalker. But that's what you get for asking for something expensive, right? I don't think it understands. For, it doesn't have enough data on planeswalkers to... Um, let's... Um, I think that uh, Josephine would be a good... A good necromancer, or the planeswalker as well. It doesn't understand, I think, like the cost. So we're, she's she's a much weaker planeswalker. We'll make her cost like one, eh, two, and a black, and a black. We'll make her cost four. Uh, Josephine. So I suspect this will be stronger <laughs> than Boris. Um. She doesn't. She only has two abilities, and they're way better. Tap or uptick to put a one-one counter on a target creature and gain life equal to its toughness. Uh, so that's pretty good. And minus three to destroy a creature. Also quite good. <laughs> what is this flavor text? Only the dead can talk. I used to get a kick out of saying "sit down" or "howdy." But the dead aren't sitting in my dining room. <laughs> okay, and that was Jace's opinion. Fine. Uh, wow, this looks like kind of a cursed geisha kind of art, right? This is a, I don't know, this, and there's like these cherry blossoms in the background. This looks like art derived from some Japanese painting. Anyway, I'm going to stop fooling around with these now. This has been, uh... Dungeon Crawl Uniques reimagined as magic cards. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.